Good morning all. How do you halve the frequency of a square wave? So I've got a square wave here. Um, it's being generated by this 555 timer. It's actually a 7555 CMOS version because I'm going to put additional uh, components on here, integrated circuits, and they're going to be CMOS 2, powering it from 5 volts. And uh, the measurement indicators are that it's uh, running at 132 kilohertz and we've got 6.2 volts peak to peak. These batteries must be uh, reasonably well charged. So how do I halve the frequency coming out of that 555? Well, I can use a flip-flop. So to divide the frequency of this uh, 555 square wave down, I'm going to use a JK flip-flop. I'm going to use the uh, 4027 that's a dual JK flip-flop. Uh, so let's take that one, plug it into this board. Uh, should really do this with the power off, I suppose. Right, now I'm going to hook up um, VCC and ground. So let's put uh, ground to pin 8, it is. And VCC goes to pin 16. So a link in there. So here's the pinning information for the 4027. Um, I'm going to use this uh, side here, which are the lower numbered pins, which is the side facing me. Now I've got J and K, which need to be pulled high, 5 and 6. And set on 7 and clear on 4, they need to be pulled low because they're active high set and resets. So I've pulled pins 5 and 6 high, that's J and K. I've pulled uh, pins 4 and 7 low, that's set and reset. So now I need to put the output of the 555 into the clock input and put the Q output of the JK flip-flop into my second scope channel. And that's it. Um, the output from the 555 timer is going to channel 1, the yellow trace. It's also going into the clock input of the JK flip-flop. And then the output from that, which is pin one there, is going to the second trace. And you can see that the um, second trace is showing a frequency exactly half that of the first trace. So uh, there we have it, frequency divided by two. Now, what if I want to double the frequency of a square wave? How do you do that? Well, you can't use flip-flops or anything like that, but there is a way you can do it, and that's using a phase-locked loop. Now, I'm going to leave the uh, JK flip-flop in place because we are going to need that later on. Um, so let's pull these two scope wires out and turn off the power. But um, I'm going to add in the 4046 now. So um, here we are, MC14046. Let's add that onto the breadboard and start wiring that up. But I'm going to try and do it in the simplest way possible initially, just so that we can get an understanding of how this works. So first I need pin 8 to ground and pin 16 to VCC. Right, here's the data sheet for the 4046 phase locked loop. Now it's quite complicated, but all I'm going to do to start with is fire up this VCO, the voltage controlled oscillator. And for that, I need a capacitor on six and seven. Um, I need a resistor on pin 11, I think it is. And that should actually then start oscillating. I should see something coming out of pin four. Let's try it. So I'm gonna put a 220 picofarad capacitor on six and seven. That's the same capacitor as the 555 has got. Um, 10k resistor, now that pulls up, no, down to VSS from pin 11, so 9, 10, 11 to ground, like that, and that I think should be it, that should start oscillating, oh no, there's one other thing, uh, on here there's an inhibit pin, pin 5, which will stop the VCO running, so I need to, uh, pull that some way, but I can't remember which way. I'll have to read the data sheet and find out. I think it pulls down to ground actually, because I think that's active high. Right, the oscillator is oscillating. It's going a bit mad because this is voltage controlled 
and it's controlled by the voltage on pin 9 and of course I've got nothing connected to pin 9 and if I even just get near it it starts uh, going crazy that I think is probably about the highest frequency it will oscillate at now I could use uh, an indicator of what frequency that is so let's add a measurement uh, of type mm, frequency uh, source on 2 add measurement right so we've got frequency on 2 is 270 kilohertz okay now the first thing we really need to know is what is the range of frequencies that we can get out of this voltage controlled oscillator and to check that we need to voltage control it so I'm going to put a potentiometer in there a little trimmer pot uh, this is a 105 so that's one mega ohm and I'm going to uh, put it in so that we can sweep the voltage on that pin 9 uh, from ground up to VCC or I suppose it should be VDD and check the full range of frequencies coming from that VCO let me wire that up okay so I've put this potentiometer at uh, 1 mega ohm between VCC and ground or VDD and ground 5 volts and ground let's call it that and I've put the wiper to pin 9 of uh, the chip so that's the VCO control pin and now I can sweep this potentiometer all the way from uh, VCC 5 volts and that's giving me the frequency of 270 kilohertz uh, to the midpoint which is giving me a frequency of uh, 86 kilohertz and if I take that all the way down to ground it slows right down so let's slow down the time base on the scope it slows right down and actually eventually stops so there's no lower frequency limit on this pot now the data sheet has this uh, resistor R2 connection on pin 12 and it says here R2 resistor R2 enables the VCO to have a frequency offset if required well it seems that what that means is that you can set it to have a minimum frequency so that the uh, oscillator doesn't stop altogether so let's put a resistor uh, on pin 12 so it'll be right next to that 10k and I'm going to use this uh, 470k uh, this one here and that should set a lower frequency so that the oscillator doesn't completely stop uh, let's put that in now actually so that also goes to ground and so there we now have a, a, a low frequency let's turn this thing back up right that's measuring 15 kilohertz if I now go to the midpoint uh, that's measuring 100 kilohertz and flat out is 275 kilohertz so by adding that second resistor we can now take the frequency uh, down this is remember with the voltage control pin at ground to 15 kilohertz but it doesn't entirely stop um, to a mid frequency of about 100 kilohertz and an upper frequency of 275 kilohertz good now for this uh, phase lock loop to work reliably we need the mid frequency of the oscillator the VCO which is about 100 kilohertz to be twice the frequency of the 555 because I want uh, this phase lock loop to generate double the frequency coming out of the 555 so I'm actually going to slow the 555 down I'm going to put another 220 picofarad capacitor on the 555 so that should halve the frequency of that and that means that double the frequency of the 555 is now roughly the center frequency of the VCO's uh, oscillator range now there's absolutely no connection between the frequency coming out of the voltage controlled oscillator in the phase lock loop chip and the frequency coming out of the 555 timer however my scope is telling me that uh, the 555 is running at about 73 kilohertz and I've tweaked the uh, VCO to about 73 kilohertz but it's obviously not exact so if I twiddle this ever so slightly I can just about get those to lock together but I have to be very very careful but yes there they are running at the same frequency now there's going to be some coupling 
going on here. I'm probably not fully decoupling this. So they are now locked, but they're essentially completely independent. There's nothing uh, causing them to be linked together. It's just that I happen to have tweaked that pot and only need the tiniest little bit of pressure on that pot to throw that out of balance. But yes, that's the VCO on the phase lock loop now oscillating at the same frequency as the 555. However, my initial aim was to get the um, VCO to oscillate at double the frequency of the 555 so that uh, we're effectively doubling the frequency using this phase lock loop chip. So let's try and do that manually. It's going to be about 146 kilohertz. So let's take that up to that, which is there. Now, can I get that to lock? If I'm getting it exactly right, it should lock, but it's going to be very difficult. Is that it? I think I'm just on the cusp of it locking there. 73 and a half, so about 147 actually. No, it really is. Oh. Ah, that might be it. Um, I'm triggering on channel 2, so let's trigger on channel 1. Uh, trigger type source is channel 1. Yes, I've just got it there, and with a little bit of coupling in the uh, power supply, I've managed to get the uh, VCO frequency, which is green, to be double the 555 frequency, which is yellow, but it's not stable. And obviously it's not going to stay there because I'm now getting temperature drift and all sorts of things. What I need to do now is complete the phase lock loop, which is a feedback control loop, to lock uh, the output of the VCO onto double the frequency of the 555. Now, how do we do this? Well, what we need to do is feed the output of the VCO, which is double the frequency of the 555 or thereabouts, through a divide by two. So we're going to need that JK flip-flop there and back into the comparator input. This is the phase comparator that it, um, tries to ensure that the phase of both signals are the same. Signal in will come from the 555. The output of the phase comparator goes to this low-pass filter. So it's a very simple thing. We just need a, a resistor, pretty much any value, and a capacitor again, it seems, pretty much any value. And that is connected to the input of the VCO. Let's wire it all up. Now, yesterday I managed to get this work without any um, uh, low-pass filter. So let's just see how we get on. Output of the 555 into pin 14. That's the signal input on the phase lock loop. Uh, output of the VCO to the clock input on the JK flip-flop. Okay, output of the JK flip-flop, Q output to the comparator input on the phase lock loop. And finally, um, the output of the phase comparator needs to go, and I'm going to do it with a resistor, to the voltage control input of the uh, VCO and we have lock. Um, it's not entirely a square wave but it is locked. Now will it track the frequency of um, the 555? Let's find out. So here I'm adjusting the uh, 555 frequency output. Now rather strange things are happening to the uh, pulse widths because as I change the frequency of the 555 oscillator um, its mark space ratio alters. And with this simple phase comparator, uh, let's try and bring that into shot. That's the one at the top, phase comparator one. It's simply an exclusive OR gate. It does say that you have to have a 50% mark space ratio on the uh, signal input. Otherwise, you don't get a, well, constant. Hmm, that's actually interesting. If I go for a low mark space, this goes from a long pulse to a short pace pulse. If I go for a high mark space, this goes the other way around. But if I try and get that at 50% mark space, this is not 50%, uh, but it's certainly tracking the frequency. And you can see that the frequency of the output of the uh, VCO, the phase lock loop, is double that of the input. Let's take that down to 75. And this is 150 doesn't quite tie up, but uh, clearly you can see that they're synchronized and that we're getting two pulses for every one pulse on the input. 
So that's how you can multiply or double the frequency of uh, an oscillator, a square wave oscillator. And uh, there's the output of the phase slot loop and it's twice the frequency. Right, let's put a capacitor in uh, where I'm supposed to have the low pass filter and see what happens. So that's ground to that voltage control input. Ah, that does seem to have improved the mark space ratio of uh, the VCO output. So let's try tweaking the 555 frequency again. And uh, yeah, that's much better by turning the um, voltage control input of the phase lock loop into more of a voltage level than a ramp. That's got quite a nice correlation between input and output. There's still a little bit of uh, asymmetry to the output frequency. If I get the input frequency about 50%, then the output frequency is also 50%. And let's go down to uh, 75 kilohertz on the input. 74, 75 exactly. And we got 149 exactly on the output. Frequency is doubled. Excellent. Well, I think I've achieved my objective. So for now, cheerio.